Hello and welcome to another video in my Fundamentals of Orchestration series. In this video, I'll introduce the brass family of instruments and discuss a bit about the history of brass instruments, the types of brass instruments, as well as the size and specification for the brass section of the orchestra. I'll keep this video fairly concise so that I can spend more time with each type of standard brass instrument in separate videos to come. Let's get started. While all of the orchestral instruments have evolved over time, in terms of construction, how the players play those instruments, and the difficulty of music those players are capable of playing, perhaps no set of instruments has evolved over time to the same extent as the brass section. In my introduction to Woodman's video, I briefly mentioned J.S. Bach's Brandenburg Concertos as being historically significant in the development of orchestral instrumentation. Shifting our attention to brass, you'll notice that J.S. Bach wrote for natural horns in the first concerto and natural trumpet in the second. Up until the mid-19th century, horns and trumpets were all natural, meaning the length of the tubing of the instrument determined the key of the instrument's overtone series. If you haven't seen my video on the harmonic series, now might be a good time to give that a view. In the second Brandenburg concerto, Bach wrote for natural trumpet in F, which meant that only the notes of the F harmonic series were possible on the instrument, although the best trumpet players were capable of playing chromatic notes outside of the harmonic series through various techniques. The different partials were played using changes in embouchure and lip pressure, and tuning could be adjusted using the embouchure as well. The fundamental, also known as the pedal tone, of the Baroque F trumpet was F2, but the typical playing range was roughly between the 3rd through the 16th partials. The pedal tone and the first overtone are always more difficult to play, and notes above the 16th partial are possible, but more difficult. As you can see here, diatonic scales are very much a possibility, with a few necessary adjustments in pitch, most notably with the 11th harmonic. Through the Baroque, Classical, and even Romantic era of Western art music, natural trumpets in C and D were most common, and natural horns in F, C, E-flat, D, and B were just a few of the more common horn tunings. If you were a composer writing orchestral music circa 1800, you would choose a key and thus have the notes of that key's harmonic series available for your piece. If you changed keys, however, you'd either need the horn player to grab a new horn, which would be asking a lot, or just keep writing for the same notes from that previous key. Knowing these limitations is important in understanding brass music during Mozart and Beethoven's time. At some point during the 18th century, natural horn and trumpet players started to use crooks, which were exchangeable lengths of additional tubing that essentially changed the fundamental pitch of the instrument. So instead of swapping out a differently tuned horn or trumpet mid-piece, the player could simply swap out different crooks, and they may have had as many as eight or nine different crooks available. In an orchestra with four horns, it was common for the composer to have two horns using a specific crook and the other two using a different crook thus expanding the possible notes and chords at any given point in the music. In the first half of the 19th century, the first valved horns and trumpets were manufactured, which used either piston or rotary valves to change the tubing length. In a sense, this was like being able to change the crook automatically, without having to carry all of those crooks to each performance. As valved instruments became more and more common in the 19th century, composers slowly began to take advantage of this new technology in works for symphony orchestra. Although some composers, like Brahms for instance, continued to write for natural horns and natural trumpets well into the late 19th century, and many 20th and 21st century composers have sought out natural instruments for their unique timbre and tunings. Modern horns, trumpets, tubas, and various other brass instruments all use valves, while the trombone uses a slide that in effect accomplishes the same thing, changing the length of the tubing to lower or raise the fundamental pitch. Like the woodwind section, the size of the brass section within the orchestra has evolved over time. The use of natural horns and trumpets was common in Baroque orchestral music by composers like Handel and Vivaldi. Having two or three distinct horn or trumpet parts was not uncommon. By the classical era, composers like Mozart and Haydn used natural horns and trumpets more frequently, though typically just two each at most. As mentioned earlier, it was typical to have each horn or each trumpet in a separate key to take advantage of the available notes between the two keys. Similar to the woodwind expansion in the early 19th century, we started to see an expanded use of brass instruments in works by Beethoven and Schubert 
with the addition of trombones being the most obvious development. Tenor, bass, and even alto trombones were used, as seen here in the fourth movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. By the mid-19th century, it was common to see four horns, as shown here in Schumann's Fourth Symphony, two of those horns in F and two in D, also two trumpets in F, and three trombones. Brahms's First Symphony also used four horns, two trumpets, and three trombones. Of course, there was great experimentation during this time, both in terms of brass orchestration techniques and in instruments used. By the end of the 19th century, a much fuller brass section was often incorporated into larger orchestral works. For instance, Anton Bruckner's Fourth Symphony went through several revisions from 1874 through 1888, with the later revisions actually incorporating a tuba part into the instrumentation. The 1888 version's instrumentation included four horns in F and E flat, three trumpets in C, three trombones, and tuba. This configuration is extremely common even today. Other composers like Mahler and Wagner wrote for even larger brass sections. Here's the last page of Wagner's Gotterdämmerung, the final opera of his ring cycle. Notice the brass section here has four horns, four Wagner tubas, which are actually closer to horns than they are to tubas, three trumpets, a bass trumpet, four trombones, and a tuba. As was the case with the woodwind section, the size and configuration of the brass section became slightly more standardized into the 20th century. Instruments like the Wagner tuba or bass trumpet, among others, fell out of favor. Of course, while orchestral music instrumentation of today varies in size, it is most common to see four horns, three trumpets, three trombones, and a tuba. Modern orchestras will be much more inclined to program a new work with that instrumentation, and any additional instruments require more money to hire the musicians. When writing my orchestral piece, Wayfaring Stranger, I actually included three tenor trombones and a bass trombone, and I had to really think hard about whether this was a good idea. Ultimately, I decided to keep that fourth trombone part in, as there were just too many moments in the piece that wouldn't quite be the same without it. Here is a brief excerpt from that piece, and I've removed everything except for brass instruments. That's all for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Next up, I'll be going into greater detail on the horns, discussing range, timbre, technique, and idiomatic writing. See you then.